This is the first time I've repaired a chair for many years. In fact, it's how I earned my basic living when I first set up a workshop in 1973. Whilst trying to find a market for my innovative furniture, I did all sorts of repairs, and this is a typical one. So recently a friend asked me to fix the broken stretcher rails and I have been so busy trying to complete the multimedia e-manual I'm creating on my micro catamaran that I got behind and he phoned me this morning saying he had guests for dinner this evening. Ouch. So I've named this video Advanced Routing as I did not have the time to mess about and jig everything up but cut straight to the chase, quickly fixing uh, the chair. Typically there's no way to rebuild and reassemble the joints because there is nowhere for them to go and I had envisaged doing a splice on one of the rails so that the three joints would assemble but time was against me and also I wasn't entirely happy with the introduced glue line that a splice would create so I had to think on my feet. So this is what I did and it took about two hours including filming so I'd say about an hour to do this repair. First I cleaned up the broken dowel joints on the various pieces. Note the importance of chisel control. Uh, forget about my rusty chisel and focus on what the fingers and thumb are doing to control the chisel. A slicing action using the thumb to exert the pressure is shown here. The rails are placed in the vise with ends flush and a careful slicing action continued with the firm finger support to stop the chisel's splitting end grain fibres. I used a mallet where a bit of the old dowel was proud. Once the surfaces are smooth, and don't be tempted to use abrasive paper as you'll lightly round off the joint shoulders, I then placed masking tape to indicate the joint locations. I then placed more tape on the actual joints so that I could mark diagonals to indicate the centre of the dowel. So the method is very simple. You place the tape carefully around the assembled joints and use that as a precise guide to place extra tape and mark the dowel centres. Now for the tricky bit and my good friend the router. Use the rails to support the router for this first operation. I hover the cutter over the diagonal lines and when I'm confident it's central I plunge and cut to a preset depth. You have to hold it very firm and not let the cutter wander. If the original joint is messy with bits missing, as often these um, are repeat repairs, then use some plastic padding to do a quick fill job. But if you hold the router firm, it should go cleanly down and then back up. Repeat the same procedure for the dowel holes on the ends of the rails. I forgot to say I'm using 10mm ash dowel which is very tough. Then you can glue the dowels into the end of the rails. I use tight bond which will take about an hour to set in this hot summer weather but a day to cure fully. Code the joints. Uh, my joint B was actually the third joint, so really should be joint C. But this is the joint that makes the assembly of the stretcher rail possible. On the leg, the dowel goes straight into its hole, but on the rail, I not only drill the corresponding hole, but I convert the hole into a slot. Now the slot is only visible from underneath, and this will allow the joint to um, assemble. Well, I hope it will, as I haven't done this before, and it's too bad as it's going to have to work as my friend needs the chair back for a dinner party tonight. The bench and vice act as support for the router base.
Now here is the tricky bit, routing out the wall of the hole on the rail. But come on, this is woodwork, not rocket science, and a steady hand is needed to carefully plunge overlapping strokes in a guess straight line. You can always nail a batten to the bench top to guide the router. I trimmed it slightly with the chisel and tested the fit. Then I dry assembled the stretcher rail joints and everything seems to fit fine. So I applied the glue with masking tape at hand to act as a clamping method. I also used a sash clamp on the side rail joints just to make them really firm. And then I made a little insert to go into the exposed slot underneath. And of course this inset will need staining to blend in the colour. A wet cloth gets rid of the excess glue and don't forget to write on the time you completed gluing. Job done. Mm -hmm.